Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. are the fashion nowadays, the invasion by the devil of a person's body and soul in order to control his actions. But possession has an insidious sister as demanding and disastrous. Obsession, the occupation of the mind by an idea or desire so dominating that one can easily find oneself equally at the mercy of the devil. This is one such story. I kept thinking... What kind of trip am I on? Of course, it couldn't be you, Susan. Nobody can talk underwater. Come to me where I lie. But keep my secret. The time is not yet. Remember, not yet. Nobody could talk underwater. But somebody did. Our mystery drama, The Sea Nymph, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Norman Rose and Paul Hecht. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule. I'll be back shortly with Act One. must all have heard of Morgan Childs. His wealth, of course, is legendary. His many and varied interests, equally so. Bicon Rubber Company, which spans the world, his coffee and sugar cartels, the machine tool company, two airlines, homes in England, Palm Springs, New York, Greece, and Zurich, the Childs Foundation and its offshoots, the Medical Center, the Institute for Research, the think tank at Berkeley, his many wives, his florid lifestyle, his art collection, definitely a name to be conjured with, a man of many obsessions, one of them to be his undoing, a man with all the strings of life in his hands, save one, the one on which his own life depended. Your name? Uh, Scott Fallon, sir. I don't like, sir. Call me Mr. Childs. Yes, sir. I mean, uh, Mr. Childs. Better. Age? 25. Height? 6'1". Weight? 185. Uh Uh-huh. You look in prime condition. Uh, You can check my Navy discharge papers for that. How many hitches did you do? Two. Why did you get out of the Navy? Not enough money. I didn't want to be a frog man all my life. How do you propose to make enough now that you're out? Start my own marine diving and salvage company. As soon as I get enough money to swing it. Mm -hmm. When you go to work for me, you'll have more than enough. Oh, what's more than enough? $500 a day, seven days a week. And I want all 24 hours. Guaranteed six months, full option on your services up to two years. That's more than enough. How many bodies do I have to bury? How many fathoms deep? Nothing like that. Hmm. Is it inside the law? A shade either side, perhaps. But I guarantee that you will not suffer if the law intervenes. I think you could be my man. So I'll tell you what I'm after and see if you'll join me. Well, it don't hurt to listen. No. Uh, come with me. Where are we going? You'll see. Hey, secret panels. Whew. That's quite some safe. It has to be. It is the entrance to a vault very few people have ever entered. Just one thing before you do. I want to guarantee that everything you see or hear from now on is top secret. What guarantee can I give but my word? I'll take it. How can you be sure? I can. You have been a marked man ever since you walked into my house for this interview. One false step and you won't be marked anymore. You'll be erased. Hey, just a minute. Now, just a minute before you open that damn door. 
Now, I don't like blackmail, mister, and I may not want your job. Well, that's up to you. Now, shall I open or not? Well, I guess I'm hungry enough. Okay, open your door, Mr. Childs. Very well. After you, Scott. Holy cow. It's like a pharaoh's tomb. No sarcophagi or corpses. Uh, oh, you mean that it's sumptuous. Yeah, that's a good word. Hey, why would you want to hide all these treasures away from every... Ho, ho, ho. Stolen, huh? Eh? No, really, Scott. Do I need to be a thief? Most assuredly not stolen. Each of them, either treasure trove or bought and paid for. From whom? My dear boy, I don't ask questions when I have the opportunity to purchase a Rubens or a Rembrandt or an El Greco or a statue like this, which almost certainly must have been sculpted by Michelangelo. Can you imagine? No private collector in the world since Lord Elgin has been able to claim such a treasure. In private? In private, of course. Governments today are most high-handed about proprietary rights. I prefer the old adage, finders, keepers. And you think you've found something else you want to keep? Correct. Something under the sea. Splendid. You are very astute. I wonder. Now, let me open this cabinet. I don't want you just to see this through the glass. I want you to touch it. What is it? What does it look like? Part of an arm with a hand. A couple of fingers eaten away by long exposure to the sea. and huh, Something that looks like an arrow that it's holding. Exactly. It is a fragment of a bronze casting made in the 4th century B.C. The subject, a sea nymph named Alassia. The sculptor, the immortal Praxiteles. That's good? Good. Oh, my dear boy. If I were to tell you in millions what this statue might be worth, and here it is, right at my own back door. Here in New York? No, no, no. On the island of Kidius in the Aegean Sea. I'll explain all about it on the flight over. The island was named after a king, Kidius, said to have been a grandson of Poseidon and guardian of the sea nymph Thalassia. There is a very pretty legend about her which helped me to recognize the tremendous value of the broken arm I found. Well, what was that, sir? I, I mean, Mr. Child. Oh, call me what you will. I don't feel old anymore since we're off on this venture. Well, I didn't mean to suggest that you were. Just a whim of mine. An idiosyncrasy, no matter. About uh, Tallahassee, uh, whatever her name. Lassia. Oh, yes, Lassia. You see, she was surpassingly beautiful and not equipped with a mermaid's tail. There really was no reason why the boy, Adrianos, did not return her love. Except, perhaps, that Kidius had marked her for his own when she came of age. <laughs> the old goat. He wasn't old. That's about my age. Oh, oh, that's beside the point. One day, so the legend goes, the god Eros. He, of course, was the Greek god of love. The little chubby guy the Romans call Cupid with bow and arrow. Arrows, Scott. Arrows. Oh, pardon me, pardon me. One day, flying over the island, Cupid, seeing Felicia sunning herself on a rock, flew low over the water to look at her. This kid was sex man. He flew so low, his wing inadvertently brushed a wave, and in no time he was floundering helpless as any land bird in the water. Felicia rescued him and bore him ashore. As a reward, he drew an arrow from his quiver, giving it to her and telling her it would win for her any man she desired. The arrow in the statue's hand. Correct. Well, what happened? Didn't she get to use it? Yes, she waited her time until one day her guardian was returning to the island by boat with Adrianus aboard. Just as dusk was falling, she swam under the boat, coming up on the other side, so that those aboard the boat who were watching the sunset had their backs turned toward her. She rose from the sea, plunging the arrow into Adrianus' heart. Well, the whole thing backfired and she killed him. No, no, not quite. But it backfired all right. A chance shift in the wind twisted the boat off course. And the arrow, instead of reaching its intended target, went through the back of Kidius to lodge in his heart. And he didn't need it since he already wanted it. Yes. So how did it turn out? Tragically. In horror, seeing her fate sealed, rather than give herself to Kidius, she sank into the sea and was drowned. 
But she was a sea nymph. In the moment of giving her love, she became mortal. The sea was no longer her home, but her grave. Oh, so this old-time sculptor made a bronze statue of her. Yes. It was commissioned by Cyrius and placed in a temple overlooking the sea. What happened to uh, Adrianus? I don't know that anyone knows. Oh, hey, we're, we're coming down. Oh, here's a poppin'. Yes, we're very nearly into Athens. And from there? My private yacht is moored in Paris. It's being specially outfitted with diving equipment. The most modern obtainable. And then we sail to uh, Kidius, huh? Correct. And more underneath that temple? More or less. The, the temple is no longer there, of course. Well, then how did you stumble on, uh, well, you know, the, uh, the piece of the statue? Two years ago, my, my ward fell in love with the island. She wanted to stay there, so I bought a villa. Last year, while diving off the rocks, I I found the arm. You dive? Well, I used to. A slight heart condition has ended that activity. Well, that's too bad. But then, I mean, before that heart thing, you, you didn't look for the rest of it? Even at my best, I couldn't. The piece I found was only in 60 feet of water at the edge of a drop-off. As if in one last attempt, Palacia had tried to keep from slipping to the bottom of the ocean. Any idea how deep? I had soundings taken. Man? 200 feet. Hey, man, you don't want scuba. You need a deep sea diver. No, no. Not enough mobility. And they'd attract too much attention. Are you going to back out? Uh, I might just think about it. A little late. The landing gear just came down. But in spite of the implied threat, I was going to think about it. That's a hell of a depth to work at. Then I saw the girl. She was waiting for us with a chauffeur and a limousine. And if she'd been as plain as a freckle, she would have stood out. But with that tawny mass of brushed gold hair, the sea gray eyes, and that figure, she would have stood out at a Miss America pageant. I took one look at her, and I was hooked. Uh, Scott, this is my, uh, this is uh, Susan Gentry. Susan, Scott Fallon. Hi, Scott. Miss uh, Gentry? I didn't expect to see you here in Athens. Oh, I bummed a plane hop over with Theo. I wanted to sail back with you on the sea nymph. Are they finished refitting her? It's the word I got from Captain Mollis this morning. Mm -hmm. Were you aboard? No. Georgos is usually an old lamb, but he pulled rank on me. Pretty high security around there, Uncle. What's going on? We all piled in the limo for the short ride to Piraeus. Susan and Morgan Childs were busy with small talk in the back while I sat up front with a chauffeur, frustrated. I could hear, but that didn't interest me as much as seeing, and had to wait till we got to the dock. As we headed out the jetty, Morgan Childs' hand was on my arm, holding me back so that Susan went ahead of us toward the big 48-foot twin diesel catch that was moored there. She's beautiful, isn't she? Terrific. Out of sight. I'm talking about the boat. Oh, yeah, of course, sir. Uh -huh. She's all yours. <clears throat> the ship, I mean. My ward is something else. She sure is. I want to point out one thing, and I will point it out only once. I'm Susan's guardian. She's the daughter of an old friend. He left her in my keeping. Uh, yes, sir. I intend to keep her. steely blue. And I was so mad that I kind of blacked out. Suddenly, there was this voice. No, dear. No. Remember me. Remember me. Remember me. Remember me. Remember me. Suddenly, my mind was clear, and strangely, I found myself understanding that old legend, why Adrianus wouldn't give the nymph a tumble. He'd been warned off by old Kidius just the way I'd been. I was in way over my head. What is this? Ancient history repeating itself after 2,500 years? But so far, Susan has shown no particular interest in Scott. So that leg of the triangle is left open. If it should be closed, 
will the pattern still be the same? We'll know more about that when I return shortly with Act Two. The Aegean Sea, since it is a part of the Mediterranean, is the same breathless blue. In the summer months, the sky reflects the color of the ocean, a great arching bowl, cloudless and infinite, unchanged and unchanging since three millennia ago when Ulysses lost his way among these ancient islands on his long journey home from the Trojan Wars. Somewhere among the scattered hundreds of dots of gray-white rock that dapple the dark mantle of the water is Chidios. And standing off to sea from the headland, where the temple with the statue of the sea nymph stood so long ago, is the catch that bears her legend on the transom. Well, why can't I go with you, Scott? Forget it, Susan. This is over your head. Come on. I've been diving with you the last three weeks. It's getting too deep. Even I don't like going down this far myself. Then don't. I got it, Susan. I got to find that lady. Why? Boss man says so. And when he calls the tune, you dance? Well, that's what I get paid for. Uh, hand me that hood, Susan. It's cold down there. Here. You're going to wear mittens, too? Uh-huh. Hey, what's the holdup? I thought you'd be overboard by now. Well, it takes a little longer to be ready to dive this deep. Here, let me give you a hand with the tanks. I'll help him, Uncle Morgan. I asked you not to call me that. Did uh, Captain Mallis position the boat right for you? Yep, far edge of the grid. This is as far out as I'll be diving. In this gear, anyway. 200 feet? Check. How many dives at this depth to complete the sweep? Oh, eight to ten. And uh, if you don't find her? Well, you'll need a bigger tender and a whale of a lot more equipment. That's no good. You, uh, see that? What? Uh-oh, government? It's too far to make identification. But I wouldn't be surprised. They've overflown us a couple of times in the last few weeks while you were below. So far, they've accepted us as just a pleasure craft. The woman's influence. With me aboard, what else could we be? I'm very well aware of your value to me, Susan. Now, be a good girl and go aft and tell Jorgis to break out the fishing gear so we can continue the illusion. But I want to go with Scott. Oh, no, I told you, Miss Gentry, no go. Hurry, my dear, that plane is getting too close for comfort. Oh, try and have anything nice. <laughs> She's something else. And I urge you to keep reminding yourself someone's else. You haven't forgotten. No, Mr. Childs, I have not. And I'm sure you wouldn't let me. So you're perfectly correct. Well... Tank secure? Yep. All set. Want a hand going over? No, I can manage. Here, let me check the standoff on the ladder. Okay. How long will you be under? Oh, a couple of hours. That'll give me 60 minutes on the bottom. What happened to the plane? It uh, veered off to the south. I don't think it was a patrol plane. Now, take it easy on the bottom. Uh -huh. Give yourself plenty of time for the ascent. I wouldn't want to lose you. Not at least till you finish the job. Oh, thanks, uh huh. You're welcome. Cherchez bien la femme. I've always had an eye for the ladies. I know, from your dossier. That's why I warned you to be careful to keep your eye on the right one. I heard you the first time. You don't have to keep them. Hey, what the? Hey, Susan, what happened? Hey, young. Uh, listen, you lame brain. I told you this, this dive was out for you. Yes, teacher, but I didn't listen. And don't bear your fangs at me, shark. I'm only going to be your pilot fish for the first leg. See you at the hundred foot mark. You get after her and send her back to the surface, Scott. Now, don't worry, sir. Leave her to me. Leave her to you, young man. Oh, no. Only for the moment. So, she is infatuated with you. That becomes more and more obvious. I suppose I should have foreseen the possibility... But I really gave you more credit, Susan. I thought you had matured enough by now to realize you could be no one's but mine. Ah, patience, patience. She'll accept it in time. The habit of being rich is very hard to shake, even for someone as romantic as our underwater demigod. Fortunately, the boy seems to know his place. But I think, yes, I'm quite sure of it. I must have a little talk with Susan. I'm quite all right, thank you. Just extending a helping hand. I don't see one. I'm a big girl now. Oh, I quite agree. But that was really a foolish thing to do. Why? 
I'm perfectly at home in the water. I know that, my little water nymph. Oh, I'm not your water nymph. She's down about 150 fathoms down there. Ah, that one. Yes, I hope. Now, let me get your tanks. Uh, yeah, that's there. it. Uh, I have them. Uh, I, uh... I take it when you left him, Scott continued on down. Yes. Uh-huh. Well, he should be on the bottom by now. Oh, long ago. He was using the line to climb down. I wonder if... Oh, here, I'll take the flippers. It's okay. I'll just toss them in the tack box. You were going to say you wonder if he'll find your groby statue today. Yeah, something like that. What are you going to do if he does? Get her on board. Oh, pretty heavy, wouldn't she be, with only three men aboard? No, not with a block and tackle. From the piece I have found already, we know she must be hollow cast. She shouldn't weigh over 250 to 300 pounds. <laughs> she doesn't sound quite your type. Well, I have very Catholic tastes. Just an idle thought, but supposing the Greek Navy should show up anywhere along the line and find you in the process of smuggling out a national treasure, what would happen to you? I don't really like to think. Greek prisons are... Not noted for their hospitality or, uh, comfort. What? You mean Daddy Warbucks would be up against a wrap all his money couldn't fix? I hate to admit it, but it's one gamble I hope never to make. The Greeks take an exceedingly dim view of despoilers of their culture or their historical heritage. Then why risk it? Well, you see, it's an obsession, Susan, to own whatever I conceive to be priceless or unique which falls into my path. No matter what the cost, I... What is it now? Nothing. Oh, it's just the buckle on my weight belt. It's foul. Well, let me get it for you. No, I... I said, let me get it for you. I can manage. It's like I said, I'm a big... You don't have to tell me that you're a big girl. I've been aware of it longer than you think. <sighs> Susan, I've waited as long as I can. I want you, not as my ward, a surrogate daughter, but as a woman. <sighs> You have to be kidding, Uncle. I, I mean, Morgan. I assure you that I am serious. Dead serious. But I'm less than half your age. And totally dependent upon me. I don't have to be. I, I can go away. Where? How? With what? I'm not penniless. Oh, but you are, my dear. You are. But my father left you money. Your father left me nothing but you, my dear. And a mountain of debts which I cleared for him so that he could rest in peace. Oh, no. Morgan, please. Don't make it sound the way you do. Please. Daddy couldn't have. He didn't mean me to. Now, now, it won't wash, Susan. You're much too smart a woman. You must have known for some time, or if not known, guessed how things really stand. And don't blame your father. He was thinking of you. I think you must be mad. Possibly a little. I told you that I am a man of obsessions, but also a man of patience. I can wait a little longer, but I warn you, once the obsession is there, I never stop till I get what I want. I blame myself, naturally. I was too eager. I should have been content to bide my time a little longer. But I've been having a few bouts with angina lately. I told myself it was just nervous tension because both my treasures were so near, but not yet attained. Still, it did remind me that with one heart attack behind me, I no longer, particularly at my age, could count time an ally. Sooner or later, I would not have the patience to wait. How soon? I realized only two nights later. Oh, how about a hand, partner? The girl is pooped. Hey, hold it down, hold it down. What did you do, swim all the way out from the house? Oh, oh I didn't fly. Hey, you must be out of your head. Oh, let's see, desperate. I wanted to talk to you without Uncle Morgan around. Or any of my other jailers. Keep your voice down. Jorgus won't hear us. I can hear him snoring. Oh, but your uncle might. Morgan? But he's back at No, the... no, he's not. He came out here to the boat about an hour ago in, in, in the dinghy. Where is he now? Asleep, I hope. What... What did he want? A showdown. About us? Us. He knows, Scott. Knows? Oh, what 
What the devil is there to know about us? He knows how I feel about you. And I've heard him warn you off what he considers his personal property often enough. Now, wait a minute. Hold up. Have you got some notion that, that I got a thing for you? You know you have. Just as I do for you. Susan, I... It's true, isn't it? Yeah. Heaven help us. It's true. Oh, I love you, Scott. So do I. But I gotta get you off the boat before he, before he knows you're here. I can swim back. Oh, no, not a chance. No, I'll row you back. We shouldn't risk it. If he finds us together... We'll take that chance. If he does, then it will be showdown time. You know he's mad, don't you? He might even have us killed. No, I don't think so. I've got one ace in the hole I've been holding out, trying to figure how to use. What? I found his damn statue. I found it a couple of weeks ago. I'm the only one who knows where it is. Maybe I can trade in one ancient Greek maiden for one certified American beauty. I heard it all. I could have killed him right there, but it was better to wait. I still wanted both women, and Scott was the key to them. To find one, and to use it to get the other. Then, he could die. I do introduce you to the nicest people, don't I? But then, what would a mystery be without suspense? And what better suspense than a bona fide threat of death to people you care for? Or don't you care what happens to Scott and Susan? If you do, I hope you'll be waiting when I return shortly with Act Three. A full red moon hangs low in the sky, its beams sparkling on the barely heaving bosom of Homer's wine-dark sea. The small boat and its two occupants are silhouetted boldly on the water. As nearing the shore, Scott rests on his oars, allowing the dinghy to float silently. Damn moon. Don't. It's a lover's moon. Yeah, and the losers if we get spotted. I don't want to risk getting any closer inshore till it sets. I can swim for it. Oh, tide's running out. Current's against you. <laughs> Why risk it? Hey, you guarded at the villa? Not openly. But the servants are all his people. There's never less than two security guards. That's what they're called. Gunsels. No uniforms. Shoulder pistols. And they look like everybody thinks the mafia ought to look. How did you get away? They just patrol the fence and monitor the gates. They figure there's no way out by water. I wish I could see a way out by land or sea. Why did you hold back when you found Thalassia? I don't know. Maybe I was just greedy. For what? The money he's paying you? Oh, that. And well, maybe I wanted to be around you a little longer. That's sweet. <laughs> Only I'd have to go and turn sour. I don't know. Maybe it didn't. Maybe she was right. She? Who's she? Oh, uh, forget it. That just slipped out. Well, I can't forget it. You sounded so strange. Well, I was that day. The last dive. I was on three a day. Remember how woozy I was the last time up? I sure do. Even Morgan made me cut you down after that. You scared me out of my head. Remember, I came down after you. You acted just like you had narcosis. Well, I figured it for raptures of the deep myself. Only, after what happened down there, or what I thought happened... Tell me. Well, it, it was my third trip down... Uh, I was, I was about 180 feet just below the edge of the cliff, sweeping out to the western end of the grid we boxed out, when suddenly I heard it. Adriano! Adriano! Oh. your voice. I mean it 
it sounded just like you. But then it had said Adriana, so it couldn't be you. And then I thought, what kind of a trip am I on? Of course, it couldn't be you. Nobody can talk underwater. Nobody could talk underwater, but somebody did. I swam towards the sound of the voice, and there she was, half buried in the sea floor on the side where the arm had broken off, the other one reaching out as if to say, here is my hand, take it, take it, but not yet. I shook it off and I started up, decompressing. And on the way, I decided to play a gut hunch, and I buttoned up. I didn't say I'd found a sea nymph. Tell the truth, I wasn't sure the whole thing wasn't some kind of... kind of mirage. You suppose it was? Uh Uh-uh. I double-checked the next day, and there she was. Did she... uh, Well, I know it sounds silly, but... Did she speak again? (laughs) No. She was just a 2,500-years-old statue worth millions who who, for my money, can rest in peace right where she is. Hey, there goes the moon behind the cloud. It's dark enough now for me to get you ashore. I'm not going. It's our only chance. I know what you're planning to do. Offer him a deal to let me go. That's the general notion. It won't work. He'll kill you and hunt me down. Oh, no, he won't. Not if I have to kill him first. God, he's armed. Uh, Who's the captain? And they're both old. I'm young. And I still have the trunk cards. What? I know where the statue is buried. And I'm the only one can get to it. I'll see you have enough head start and I'll meet you after. We'll make a rendezvous. We still don't stand a chance. Not right now. But play our cards as they lie. I have a hunch, a real strong one, that we'll pull it out. It was a tough job convincing Susan. But finally, quite suddenly, she gave in. And I landed her and headed back for the catch. I held back one thing from her. My hunch. (laughs) That was too screwy to admit, even to myself. It haunted me that somehow, some way. The last year was a lady who was going to bring us luck. But it sure didn't look that way as I got back to the sea nymph. Ah! Forgive me if the sudden light blinds you, Mr. Fallon. But better to see you with no sudden moves, please. Both the captain and I have guns. All right, no moves. Just get that damn light out of my eyes. In good time. First, what did you do with uh, my ward? I took Miss Gentry back to the shore. Good. That saves me the trouble of having to arrange for her return. How did you know she was here? As it happens, I wasn't asleep when she arrived. I overheard everything that was said between you. Everything. Good. Saves a lot of time. Now get rid of your stooge here and we go up to the bridge and deal. I admire your effrontery. Deal for what? Your lady or mine? No, Nikos. No, no. Give her everything she needs. Car, money, whatever she wants and let her go. No, no, no. Don't follow her. She's to be absolutely free. Uh, One minute. minute. Are you satisfied, Scott? Not quite. Put Susan on the phone. Let me talk to her. Very well. Uh, Nikos, put Miss Gentry on the phone. Scott? Uh, thanks. Susan? S- Susan? Uh, you all right? Yeah, 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 darling. Everything's all right at my end. No? No, no, it's going to work out. Uh-huh. Yeah, as soon as you get to America, call me and let me know. When I know you're safe, I'll take Morgan to his 2,000-year-old date. (laughs) She's a bit nearer his speed than you are. No, no, my darling. Not shipped ashore. We'll be waiting at the villa for your call. Uh Uh-huh. Yes, I love you, too. Now what? We wait for Susan's call. Come up to Port 
couple of degrees. Aye, aye, sir. Uh, that'll do it. Hold her. Hold her there. Steady as she goes. Now, just thread the needle between those twin rocks. Uh, yes, sir. Now, you can drop her to idle. Let her have her way. Neutral it is. And I'll go forward now to run out the anchor. When I give you the signal, hard astern. Aye, aye, Captain. <laughs> oh, Captain, my Captain. Your fearful trip is almost done. Harder stern. How long will you be down? Our first dive will be a good three hours. Take me that to get her dug out and the rope cradled around her. Second dive, well, it'll be a short one just to attach the winch rope. But I'll need time to decompress coming up. Yes, but can we raise her by sundown? All things being equal, it'll be a long, lonely day for you. Well, I'm sure I can find ways to pass the time. Yeah, and it better not include having a surprise party for me when I come up. Now, remember the deal. This is just between us two. Yes, I remember. You're sure that we can get her on board? We'll manage. It'll be better. We will. Then we sail under power to Piraeus, and you drop me there free and clear. You will be free and clear, my friend. Count on that. Okay. Here goes nothing. I can't believe I'm really going to see her at last. Uh, she's a little the worse for wear. You said she was intact. Nothing could dim her beauty. Uh, you can judge for yourself any minute. Uh, she's about to break water. Yeah, there she comes. All right, slow down the winch. Slow down. We'll swing her aboard. Okay, easy now. Hold it. And yeah, we'll leave her like that just for a minute, standing almost tiptoe on the deck. Oh, Lord. Is she magnificent? Uh, to each his own. Yes, I will. We'll just try the arm now to make sure not too much has been lost. Ah, oh, look at that. Almost a perfect fit. Well, so long as you're happy. Oh, my dear Scott, I couldn't be more delighted. Everything has turned out quite perfectly. Okay, now you live up to your part of the bargain. Oh, you should know better. I never make bargains, or if I do, I feel no need to live up to them. This is a double cross? Of course. You didn't think I'd let Susan get away from me? She already has. <laughs> With my resources, how long do you think it'll take to track her down? You forget what happens if you do. I blow the whistle on your affair with this lady and that secret room back home. Are you going to give up all your priceless treasure for, for two little people like us? Oh, you just aced me. Well, you knew the turn. I also knew that I still held a trump. What? Dead men tell no tales. Shoot him, boys. What? <laughs> Forgive me, Thalassia, but yours was the weapon which came to hand. Well, Mr. Fallon, you really are a dead weight. Well, it's a good thing I took the precaution of tying your hands. I thought that you had left us. What are you trying to do? I'm committing you for burial, suitably weighted down. No. I'm sorry you made the mistake of remaining alive. Wait, Morgan, no use. This Greek ship around, headline. You're caught red-handed. Don't, don't, don't make it worse. I don't believe you. You're all I have to fear. So die, Mr. Frogman, die. <laughs> This is the Greek Navy. You are ordered to remain at anchor. They are coming aboard. No, you're not going to take her from me. If I can't have her, no one shall. So where was the Greek scuba team? We'd arranged the whole thing. Darling, navies are navies. They wanted to wait until the statue was dropped to the deck to make the full case against Morgan. They were hanging in at five feet using sound equipment to monitor. Oh, great. So that's how I almost bought it, huh? Darling, it was just a miracle the way it happened. Yeah, who fished me out? 
What do you mean? You know you had no air, so I kept you buddy breathing till I could get you back to the surface. You were there? Sure. I had proprietary rights. Besides, I didn't trust that other dame you've been tripping with. Who? The Lassia. <laughs> Did they get her up again? Brought her up this morning. And... and Morgan's body with her. Clue me in on that. What happened? He was trying to get rid of the evidence, I guess. He was swinging her out over the sea when the winch let go. And somehow his foot got fouled in the winch chain. She took him right to the bottom. How about that? 2,500 years she waited for her revenge. What do you mean? Well, maybe I'm still a little scrambled in the brains department. But didn't the three of us live out a legend that first happened about 500 B.C.? I guess in a way we did. Yeah. Only this time the twist has a happy ending. Yes, darling. My buddy. My breath is your breath. My time is your time. My house is yours. Let's go home. I said at the beginning that obsession was possession's insidious sister and that it could put one equally at the mercy of the devil. What a happy thought that this time it was the devil who was obsessed and who sowed the seeds of his own disaster. I'll be back shortly. The great archaeological museum in Athens houses such superb examples of the unparalleled sculpture of Greece's golden age as the boy on the horse, the statue of Poseidon, the beautiful young man who may be Paris, all in bronze. At least one of them dug from the sea. But the temple on the island of Chilios takes no back seat. The statue of Thalassia, the sea nymph, which has been restored to a pedestal near where it originally must have stood, would be the show place of the island, if it existed. But of course, it doesn't you must allow us storytellers some poetic license. Our cast included Norman Rose, Paul Hecht, and Jada Rowland. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Mrs. E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. episode of CBS Radio Mystery Theater. If you enjoyed this and want to hear more, please subscribe to this channel. You can also visit my other YouTube channel by searching Mr. Brian